Good evening, you're watching Kid News, and I'm your host Prasad. Najib's good heart is why Mohammad Sadiq Hassan was appointed to one of the board of advisors, where he received 30,000 ringgit a month for doing nothing. Former Chief Secretary to the Government Mohammad Sidiq Hassan told the Kuala Lumpur High Court today that his appointment to one MDB's Board of Advisors was done out of the goodness of Najib Abdul Razak's heart. The 19th prosecution witness, Sidiq, explained that Najib thought his salary of 29000 as the Chief Secretary at the time was too low and needed to be compensated in other ways. When the lead defence counsel, Muhammad Shafi Abdullah, put forward that there was nothing wrong with Najib's choice of Sidiq as the decision was driven by the goodness of his heart, the witness agreed. On a question from Shafi about whether Najib had selected Sidiq because the later was an eminent person, the witness also agreed. Yesterday, Sidiq testified that he was never invited to any meeting when he was on 1MDB's advisory board. He also testified that Najib selected him for the advisory board position with monthly fees of 30000 Najib is on trial for four counts of abuse of power and 21 counts of money laundering involving 2.28 billion ringgit of 1MDB's funds. A million ringgit diamond bracelet currently sitting in a vault in Bank Nagara will not be returning to Rosma Manso. Rosma Mansur today relinquished her claim on a white gold diamond bracelet worth almost a million ringgit. The piece worth 220,000 US dollars or 966,000 ringgit is now kept in Bank Negara, Malaysia's vaults. The matter was informed by Rosma's lawyer Azamuddin Aziz during case management before a high court judge, Muhammad Jamil Hussein. The lawyer said Rosma no longer wants to proceed with the claim on the item. Lawyer David Gurupatam, representing Lebanese jewellery company Global Royalty Trading SAL, also confirmed that the wife of former Prime Minister Najib Abdul Razak did not want to proceed with the claim. He said the withdrawal of Rosma's claims had saved the costs and time for all parties involved in the case. Apart from Rosma, Global Royalty is also staking a claim on the bracelet. The jewellery was among various items seized by the police from the premises belonging to Obu Holdings in Dario Berhad at Pavilion Residences in May 2018, which was allegedly linked to the 1MDB financial scandal. In 2019, the prosecution filed the forfeiture application to seize various items including over 11,000 items of jewellery, 401 wristwatches, 16 watch accessories, 234 pairs of spectacles and 306 handbags, as well as cash in various denominations amounting to over 140 million ringgit. Jamal Yunus, best known for leading the Red Shirt several years ago, felt that he could do better than his lawyer in court. However, by the looks of it, he should have kept his lawyer. The one million ringgit defamation suit by Sapute MP Teresa Kok against Sungai Basa Amno Division Chief Jamal Yunos is set for a decision on July 26. The date was set after a hearing in which the Amno man attempted to represent himself. The suit is over the allegation of abuse of Yayasan Warisan Anak Selengor funds in which Jamal accused Kok and several Pakatan Harapan representatives of misappropriating funds from Skim Masra Usia Amas. Kok said to a surprise and that of her lawyers, Jamal discharged his lawyer yesterday afternoon and informed the court that he wished to represent himself. Jamal even came to court without a lawyer. Jamal reportedly told the court that the lawyer he discharged was not good enough. She said it was clear that Jamal was not a lawyer and was unable to carry out cross-examination. He also told the judge he had no witnesses to offer. The DAP lawmaker said because of this, the trial finished in less than an hour. Judge Arif Imran then fixed July 26, 2022 for decision. The anti-hopping law inches closer to becoming a reality with Minister Wan Junaidi already declaring mission accomplished. The Parliamentary Special Select Committee to study a bill aimed at stopping MPs from switching parties has completed its duties. In a statement today, Committee Chairperson Wan Junaidi Tuanku Jafar said all questions raised by the Cabinet on June 1st have been resolved yesterday. 
He said the committee's response to those questions will be documented in a cabinet note and tabled during a future cabinet meeting. The cabinet was scheduled to meet this morning. However, Wan Jinaidi did not specify when his note would be tabled. Wan Jinaidi said the committee also resolved to recommend Prime Minister Ismail Sabri Yaakob to convene a special sitting of parliament during the first week of July. The second meeting of the Day One Rakyat for this year has already been scheduled for July 18th until August 4th. Laws to restrict MPs from switching parties are a core component of Ismail Sabri's confidence and supply agreement with Pakatan Harapan. Those who are pushing for early elections have been challenged by AMNO veteran Nasri Aziz to seek an audience with the king. Padang Rangas MP Nasri Abdul Aziz said it was disrespectful for some AMNO leaders to keep pressuring Prime Minister Ismail Sabri Yaakob for an early election. Speaking to Sina Haryan, Nasri said the decision to dissolve parliament lies with the young Dipatuan Agong. Hence, he added discussing the next election date was improper because it involves the powers of the Agong. Nasri also said he was a cabinet minister for more than 10 years and previous prime ministers never discussed the election date in the cabinet. Following BN's triumphant performance in the Johor state election in March, several AMNO leaders have urged Ismail Sabri to hold a general election soon to ride on BN's current momentum. The current term of parliament expires on July 16, 2023. With the elections on AMNO's mind, it's also starting to reevaluate its relationship with other parties at the state level. And it's bad news for PAS in Selangor. AMNO and PAS's seat-sharing deal in Selangor is no longer valid, according to Selangor AMNO chief Noor Omar. He said this is because PAS is now part of Parikata National. In an interview with Utusan Malaysia, No said the future of the pact in Selangor would have to depend on the decision of the party's top leadership. He said there used to be a pact under Muafakat National. However, now that PAS is with PN, that formula is no longer applicable. No's current stand on the pact with PAS was a major climb down from statements he made up until early May. Previously, he had repeatedly stated that AMNO and PAS should not face each other in Selangor in order to increase BN's chances of returning to power in the country's wealthiest state. BN has been out of power in Selangor for three consecutive terms. Cabinet had more important things to discuss today. This is why the topic of Zoraida's status as a minister did not crop up at the meeting. Defence Minister Hishamuddin Hussein said the Cabinet did not discuss the status of Plantation Industries and Commodities Minister Zuraida Kamarudin at their meeting today. This comes after Zuraida announced last month that she would be leaving Basatu to join Party Bangsa Malaysia. Her position as a minister is currently in question, as it was by virtue of a Basatu quota. As she has yet to officially join PBM, she is considered an independent minister as of now. Hishamuddin was speaking at a press conference after attending the pre-launch of the Langkawi International Maritime and Aerospace Exhibition 2023 at the Wisma Pertahanan in Kuala Lumpur today. Meanwhile, Hishamuddin said the cabinet meeting prioritised the issue of price hikes of goods such as chicken and eggs. Zoraida told reporters yesterday that she was on standby to meet Prime Minister Isma Sabri Yaakob this week. Yeah, he told me next week. Next week is this week. So, it could be the whole of this week, but I'm on standby. <laughs> yeah, because uh, uh, if, like what the, uh, the PM says, that I'm still a minister, so that's why today I officiate this event. And that is all from me today. For more stories, you can go to kinetv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook for the latest news updates. If you'd like to support independent media, do consider subscribing to malaysiakini.com. I'm Prasad. Thank you for watching.